This is Don't Panic, episode number 335, recorded April 6th, 2022. Hello, everybody. Welcome to this episode of Don't Panic, the technology podcast on gadgets, the internet, and of course you. I'm Sean Jennings, joined by two guys who are absolute experts at updog. It's Colby Rabideau and Dan Miller. Good evening, everybody. <laughs> What's up, dog? Hey, I got to do it. Not much. What's up with you? Thank you for, thank you for helping me with that. No problem. Sean Jennings, the Colin Robinson of Don't Panic. Got him. Got him. I feed <laughs> off that energy. Uh, I'm sick. That's what's up with me. That's my Aww. news. It's not COVID, but it's uh, still unpleasant. Aww. It's been years. Sorry, I have no that. immune system anymore. No, you know, it was all of my cold medicine in my house expired in 2020, which is very funny to mm. me that <laughs> I haven't needed it for the last two years. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't I didn't even have any. I just didn't have the stuff. I didn't have the goods. I always had the goods. So so take us through it, Colby. What do we got? We got the we got the congestion. Yeah, it's it's weird. It's not like full on congestion, but like there's just mucus like all up and down. Like it's there. I don't have as like I can breathe freely through my nose. You got that like, back of the throat drip? Yes, yes. That post sore throat, nasal drip. Not so much right now, but like later, like in the middle of the night, I will have a have a sore throat. Like I'll take my medicine before I go to bed, and when I wake up at three thirty, I will have a sore throat. That's been the it's that dry evening air. It's roof stoof. Yeah, man. I don't know. Oh, man. I feel like you, you, you know what I'm talking about, Sean. I feel for you, man. I feel for you. I came out of my trade show with just, you know, I can handle colds don't really bother me. I mean, they're not great, but I don't like, you know, get really pissed off or bothered by them. We all get them. Isn't but the... this a Frozen song? <laughs> be okay. Be okay. Uh, <laughs> but the one symptom I absolutely cannot stand, and it's a rare one for me, I usually don't get it, is the aggressive sore throat. I'll put up with a runny nose. I'll put up with a cough. I'll put up with a lot. I, the sore throat, because there's really no, there's really not much you can do about it. And you have to talk. It drives me crazy. Mm. I do. I feel like the like medicine for sore throats, though, is the, at least for me, like that's the thing that cold medicine or even just like Advil or something works the best for well, and the, the sore throat drops with the numbing agent in them, if you mm. get those and they numb the throat. So they do help. I'll give you that. But it is also the one thing where it's like, like last Monday, my throat was on fire. I, I could not do the show because it was just, it, yeah. was, it was bad. So Laura, Laura has introduced me to Theraflu, which is oh, okay. like this, it's, it's like cold medicine, but in powdered form that you dissolve in hot water. So it's kind of like tea. Uh, and the nice part is in addition to doing the things that cold medicine does for you, it also like ingesting it is like drinking hot tea. So it like, <laughs> like, like makes you feel better. Like you get a little bit of relief from the hot beverage you're drinking and then you start to feel better. It's a pretty nice experience. I'd never, uh, never encountered that before. Hmm. That's a good hot tip. Yeah. It doesn't taste good, but it doesn't taste bad either. <laughs> like most medicine? Yeah, it tastes better than most medicine. Feels okay. Yeah, it's acceptable. All right, all right I've, I've unboxed the, uh, the item. So, so, so the folks at home know, we started beforehand. And, oh my god, you did not. Is that a DVD not. drive? No, that that listen, and anyone who was alive in like 2011 knows what that is. That's a that's a Nintendo Wii, my friend. Wii. Mm -hmm. Oh my god. The, the the product that was so immensely popular that people waited in line for hours to get it and then it immediately was forgotten about and no one cared about it ever again. Yep. Yep. I has it. Um Yeah, so I've been going to these Smash tournaments and the other week, I went to a smaller one. Actually, this was a very depressing moment. So 
I, I've been going to a Smash tournament at a college nearby, and that that was the one I was going to like once a week throughout March. And then towards the end of March, I was going to go to this other one that sounded like more fun. It was at a bar instead of being at a university. Uh, and I mentioned this to one of the people I was playing with, and they go, oh, yeah, man, I wish I could go. But, uh, you know, 21 plus only. And I was like, oh, right. You know, you don't really have to, especially with masks on, like, if, if you know, you can only see people from, like, their eyes down. It's like, you don't really know how old people are. But then I was like, I am playing Smash at a university. So it makes sense that there are a lot of people here who are students. And most students are under 21. Uh, so anyways, I went to that tournament thinking that it would be like the ones at the universities. They have like 12 CRT TVs and like uh, GameCubes plugged into all of them. And instead they had two. Uh, and so a bunch of people showed up and no one could play. Uh, and I was like, okay, if be the change you want to see in the world. So I've acquired my first ever Nintendo Wii. Wow. That I now need to modify to be able to do the cool tournament stuff on it. So that'll be a, a project at some point. Very nice. That's very yeah. cool. Now you can play all the Wii sports you want. That's true. That came with the sensor bar. Oh my Got god, did, did it come with the Wii Fit board as well? No. <laughs> no. It did not. Whoa! What is this? Oh, this is like the stand thing, right? I forgot that it came with these, yes. these silly oh, stands. Man. And I've got a uh, at least one, one uh, Wii remote in here, complete with uh, requisite uh, Wii remote condom. Yes? Oh, God. Oh, man, I'm having flashbacks. This is bad. <laughs> and some cables and a nunchuck. Now, Dan, I, I yes. would like to give you a mini challenge here, if I may. Okay. Is it plug this into your TV? Because I already know I can't do that. <laughs> yes, find all the find the eight adapters you have to string into one another to make it compatible with your modern television. Thought about that, Sean. <laughs> oh my god. Incredible. Everything old is new again. Yep. We two HDMI adapter. Oh, I think they sell about four of those a year. Um, no, Dan, my question is, because I was curious, I looked up the list of the best-selling Wii games of all time. And it's got to be Wii Sports at number one. Yes, which was bundled with it, to be right. fair, but yes. That doesn't even really count. But yes, that, that has 82 million copies sold. The second place has 37. So Is, it, is Brawl in second place? Brawl is eighth. Okay. So but, like, uh, good place. I see I didn't have a Wii, so I'm I actually am not a good person to to answer this question. I, I did dropped have off a at Wii, the GameCube. Which is weird. It's yeah, the, the first nine are all Nintendo games. Mario Kart, uh Wii Sports Resort, um Wii Play, Wii Fit, Super Mar Super Mario Galaxy. I was gonna see if you guys can name the top selling Wii game not made by Nintendo. <laughs> Guitar Hero. Hmm. No, but you're kind of in the you're kind of in the realm, actually. Rock Band. No, but <laughs> similar. Uh, DDR. Again, you are even hotter. You're getting hotter, but you got to think of the motion controls. Oh, yeah. Also, being on Microsoft was like, Connect at the time. What was that game that was DDR, <laughs> but for the new generation? NBA Shit. Baller Beats. <laughs> <laughs> No, you had to like make the dance moves and stuff. It wasn't with the pad. You had to do it with your hands. Yes, you're right there. I don't know what it's called. Just dance. Just dance. Yes. Damn. Yep. And then you have to go pretty far. You got to go all the way to number 19 to get the next non-Nintendo title. Um, it's mostly just Nintendo. Is it, uh... No, it's Lego it? Star Wars, the complete saga. Oh. Oh. I was going to guess uh, Call of Djibouti. 
Did they even make a movie? movie? I think they did. (laughs) Now I'm looking for, like, the highest, like... People made Wii games for a while because there's so many of them. Down at number 33 is Resident Evil 4. That's probably your highest, like, traditional game. Right. Yeah, you could get Call of Duty... Call of Djibouti Black Ops for the Nintendo Wii. <laughs> but also, I will say, tied with Resident Evil 4 at the 33rd with 2 million sold is also Guitar Hero 3 and Michael Jackson, colon, The Experience. Which, can't imagine what that was. That's probably another dancing game. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh... The game features uh, many of his hits. Okay, but it doesn't say what you do in the game. Gameplay, Wii. Oh, it's similar to Just Dance. Yes, you do Just Dance. That's a bummer. For Connect as well. Remember Connect? Oh, yeah. And wasn't the console after... Wasn't one of the Xboxes, like, Connect native? Was that the uh, PlayStation 4 competitor that I can't remember the name of? Oh, their, uh, their Move? Wasn't it called Move? PlayStation Move? No, no, no. Wasn't one of the Xbox consoles at launch, weren't they like, this is the Kinect native console, and you're going to control the UI with your hands? Yes. Which one was that? Was that uh, the PlayStation 4 generation? I I don't remember. What was the, what was the Xbox after the 360, but before? Was that the X-Bone? No, just I think they just went to the one. The X it went from the three sixty to the one, didn't yeah. it? The X Bone. Xbox One. But wasn't the, wasn't the 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 PS three and the Xbox three sixty were the same like yes. generation. Correct. So like wasn't there an equivalent Xbox when the PS four came out? Yeah, the Xbox One. And what? Well, what's the, okay? What's the one now? Maybe that's where the I'm... Series X. It's the PS5. Oh yeah. Okay, you're right. I was just confused. That it is confusing. It is confusing. Yeah. <sighs> How are you, Sean? I feel like we haven't talked about you. I got. Oh, thanks. I got my Wii. Colby's sick. I wish people would talk about me more. Um. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what's going on with me? No, uh, not really anything interesting. Um, the only thing I can think of is, remember how my car got totaled back in the fall and then I bought a new car? Yeah, someone ran into it in the road while all your cameras were taken down because your siding was getting redone or something Hugely like disappointing. That. Hugely disappointing. Well, anyway, I bought a new car back in, like, November, um, and yesterday I traded it in and got a different one. I thought you were going to say it got totaled again. No, <laughs> no, no. Thankfully, that's not the was case. Was this just for fun? Uh, what, was no. the, what was the reason? No, it was not just for fun. Um, and actually, I hope my dad isn't watching because I haven't told him yet. And he does sometimes watch this on Facebook. So I was going to tell you. Um, <laughs> Surprise. It's not a secret. Uh, no, the car I bought sucked. I bought a Kia and I hated it. I really did. It bummed me out. Um, and I feel a car I spent a lot of money on should not bum me out. And so I was at the dealership because my mother bought a Hyundai Tucson many months ago. And I was with her at the dealership getting it fixed. Uh, I had a small issue. And the salesperson was there. And, of course, me, like an idiot, talking to a person who sells cars, I was like, yeah, my Kia sucks, but I really like my mom's Tucson. It's an awesome car. And they go, oh, well. We could probably like get you in a Tucson if you want, and of course I'm like, <laughs> tell me more. Um, and they basically ran the numbers, and the price on the 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 Kia is still so good because the market's hot, and the Tucsons were on sale anyway. The numbers worked out. I basically just got the car for the same. I just swapped the cars, so now I drive a Tucson hybrid. That's awesome. So that's the kind of dumb bullshit that happens in my life. That's wow. exciting, though. Yeah, my first time driving a hybrid, which is kind of cool. It does the regenerative braking. It's got the little electric. Uh, when I go slower than like 15 miles an hour, it just goes on electric. Mm-hmm. Um, so, now, is this a plug-in hybrid or is it just a hybrid hybrid? I wanted a plug-in. Unfortunately, my house is like 
electricity capacity is basically maxed out. So I'd have to have them put in a bigger lot. It's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. So I would have, if I could have gotten a charger put in, I would have done it. Mm -hmm. Um, But unfortunately, no dice. Damn. That's cool. Congrats. Thank you. Thank you. It's, I don't know if it's an interesting story, but it's a story. It, It is an interesting story. It's crazy times we live in. I guess. I spent like five minutes the other day staring at the logo on a car trying to figure out what the fuck it was. And it, it was a Kia. It turned out it was a Kia. It looked like KN, but the N was backwards. They have a it's new like, they have a new logo. Right. They have a new logo and it's so very confusing. angular. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that was Kia. I've been seeing those too. It's only I thought like it was some kind of old. French car or something. It was so it's weird. It's pretty recent. Yeah, if you were Nissan's got a tweaked logo as well. They did in the last like two years. Um, I do feel like that's a stupid thing I'm good at identifying cars just by looking at them. Nice. A skill that's literally never come in handy. Yeah, it's like uh, trivia. It's a trivia thing. I feel like that'll only be useful if you witness like a car based crime. I, honestly, and I, not that I've witnessed a car-based crime before, but I have had to tell people, like, oh, I saw a, this car, and I'm usually like, oh, it's like a Nissan Sentra. It was like a, mid, a mid-2010 a mid <laughs> Nissan Sentra. Like, I can do that, and it's not, again, it's very dumb. I don't feel smart. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe you could have your own, like, detective show, The Car Whisperer. <laughs> Thank you for being very generous. You're such a generous ghost. Thank you, Colby. Yeah, I could have a detective show where I identify car making models. <laughs> it's like the the show where the lady was a psychic. It's basically the same. Yes. Exactly. So it's like the zoom and enhance meme, except it's just my brain. <laughs> right. I like that. Uh, you know, I do actually have a challenge. Maybe you guys can help me with it. Are you guys good at making playlists? No. They have to be very specific kinds of playlists. <laughs> okay, well, I'm making a specific <clears throat> playlist, and I would like some suge- if there are any suggestions. So for an upcoming Up for Debate episode, I'm going to debut a new format where we're going to kind of rank and compare things. And we don't do a lot of music. And so for some reason, I've decided to pick a very narrow niche of song. And we're going to get a bunch of them and sort of talk about them. And I'm looking for that. And I don't think there's a name for this type of song that I'm aware of. That... Mid to early 2010s car commercial type songs where everyone in the background goes, hey, hey, oh, hey, whoa. You know, you know what I'm trying like, um, like the big one is like Renegade. Do you remember that song? <laughs> no, or um, Not by name. <laughs> or uh, what is the one? Hey, hey, hey. Da, 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 da. See, again, this is so specific. <laughs> Nobody knows what I'm talking about. Um, let me pull up the playlist I was working on and see if you know any of the names of these songs. Hey, Geronimo. Hey, Geronimo. Remember that one? No. They're, these are not that obscure. I think the problem for me is uh, any kind of mid-2010s music I'm probably out on, but I also don't haven't had cable TV since, like, 2009. So... I haven't seen commercials. I see commercials when I go home for Christmas. So I put the playlist in the chat, and and you can open it and look at it at your leisure. But uh, shut up and dance. So take shut up and dance. Okay, I know that song. Okay, so it's like that generic of a song. Do you know what I'm talking about? Or um, even like um, Bastille with Pompeii is another kind of good one. Anyway. I'm trying to build a play. Yeah. I know these songs exist, but again, no one knows the names of any of these songs. They would I just would describe these songs heard. as like, wait, what, am I thinking of the wrong thing? Like Bastille is like power pop. I would describe it. I, I think you're close. I think you're pretty close. I don't think that's wrong. You get a little bit into like the Imagine Dragons, maybe a little bit, though I don't want to quite yep. go that far. Um, I did put uh, High Hopes from Panic at the Disco on here, which is maybe a little farther than I would go. I'm really looking for just those, like, bad songs from that era. <laughs> um, and so if you can think of any, please let me know. I can't help. Oh, this is, like, the worst episode of Reply All ever. 
I'm trying, <laughs> I'm trying to think of these terrible songs that everyone's heard. <laughs> well, that's what it is. And honestly, what got me going is I sat like right in the car. There's a station called Pop Rocks, which is like sort of pop slash rock songs from the 2000s. So that's all they play. And they play a good mix of stuff. But every so often, one of these songs come on, and I'm like, I know this song. I had no idea that was the name of it or who sang it. I heard it everywhere for five minutes in 2013. Like, that's mm-hmm. the type of song I'm looking for to make a playlist out of. You know what you should do? You should find, like, recordings of, I don't know, HGTV, just wholesale, like, 2014 HGTV recordings, and just watch those, and then pop open whatever it's called, uh, the Music Finder app, Shazam. Yes. Uh, I think that you should uh, embark on this project. Yeah, I just need to Google, like... Uh, insurance company commercials or something like uh, car <laughs> the car commercials is, is kind of the standard I use where a song gets like moderately popular enough where it's not too expensive to use in a commercial, but it's catchy enough that you'll remember the commercial. And so it's, you know, the Nissan cars driving around and Hey, Geronimo, Hey, G-, and I'm like, Oh my God. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, this was a fruitful. Is there anything you guys would like to talk about? No, I'm still trying uh, to think of the I... names of these songs. <laughs> <laughs> I I don't have we had a show since the Apple event? Did I mention we that did... I purchased the studio display? Yes, the last show yet. we did was the event. So... Okay, yeah. Well, I don't have it yet. Uh, it was supposed to have delivered by today. And this morning I got a notification saying uh, maybe April 14th to the 21st. Uh, so, I don't know what... This is my first, you know, pandemic's been going on for a long time. This is my first delayed Apple product. And I would think it would be closer, because you're on the West Coast when it comes over from Asia. I would think they could just like, and I ordered bring it, it right to your right house. right afterwards. I was, pretty, I was pretty quick on the draw. Dang. That's rough. <laughs> That's my update. That's a bummer. Yeah. I haven't, uh, I'm trying to think if I've, you know what I did buy and ended up returning because I didn't think it was useful enough to justify the cost, an air purifier. Oh, I, I bought one of those. of those. Yes, and I bought one of the, the, the Kawei, uh big, I bought one and like, Colby, I'm assuming, do you just like leave yours on auto? Yeah. Does it ever run more than just level one? Yeah. I think my cooked? airs. Do you cook my, anything? Cooking, other than cooking, cooking mine has run. Other than that, I it's been here for like a month, and it's never ran more than just like. The Have you basic. ever burned a candle? No. <clears throat> and then blown it out? No, I don't. I don't <laughs> do candles. I'll burn my house down. <laughs> yeah, that that those are the only times I've noticed it go off. Um, we'll see when wildfire season happens here. Mm. What changes? Yeah. Yeah, mine, it definitely will sometimes, like, here when the windows are open. Also, down, my downstairs neighbor smokes weed a lot, so it's pretty clutch for that. Mm, uh, that is pretty good. Yeah, I think the problem I was trying to solve was um, a lot of dust and cat hair and things like that. And it turns out the solution is to just vacuum more. I don't think I need a fancy air purifier for that, unfortunately. Yeah. It does. It really does help. Like once in a while, I'll be sitting like in on the couch in the morning and the sun is shining through the windows and you can just see all of the dust. And then I'll like manually put it on to the highest <laughs> level for 10 minutes and, and then all the dust is gone. Like, yes. But that is a good idea. Yeah. No. What I again, what I was hoping is it would just suck up all the cat hair and the dust and stuff. And it. It's not a vacuum. What I really yeah. wanted was a vacuum, right. unfortunately. I The other thing I use mine for is when I vacuum. So, like, while I'm vacuuming and yeah. or dusting, I will blast the air, the air cleaners, and then I'll let them go for, like, 15 minutes after I'm done. Because usually that is a period of time where I will be sneezing constantly. Smart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, so it ended up being a bust, unfortunately. So, but that's the fun of Amazon. You can try it and then return it if you don't like it. Amazing. Well, 
if that's the excitement as we roll into April, I suppose we can talk about the tech news of the week. And we've got a number of stories in here because we haven't done the show in a little while. So uh, we've got them from all of our favorite people and companies uh, from across the spectrum. You guys can look at the list and let me know while you're looking at that. I will thank everybody who's watching us live right now on our multi-platform live stream on Facebook, Twitch, and YouTube. Uh, it's Wednesday, which is unusual. Usually we're on Mondays, but today we're on Wednesdays, and we appreciate you joining us. If you have anything you'd like us to talk about or any comments you'd like to leave us, attach it to the live stream, and we'll see it during the show. Guys, what, uh, where are we going to start? There's a lot of good stories in here. Yeah, we, we really should only do one episode a month. <laughs> then we might have some tech news to talk about. We had to overflow. It's a good thing. Um, oh, do you have one, Colby? I'll, I'll pick one if not. You can do it. Uh, let's talk about PlayStation Plus subscription. Yes. Because another service needed a plus at the end. PlayStation Plus is here. Uh, announced this week. Um, it'll combine Sony's two current subscription services, PlayStation Plus and PlayStation Now, into one. Uh, it will start rolling out in June, uh, and it will come with three tiers. So stay with me here. The lowest tier is called PlayStation Plus Essential, and it comes with the same benefits PlayStation Plus members have today, which is uh, cloud storage for safe games, online multiplayer access, two monthly downloadable games. The price will remain the same as it is right now, $9.99 a month or less if you buy in bulk. Next is the middle tier, PlayStation Plus Extra. It comes with all those same perks, but includes a selection of up to 400 PS4 and PS5 games uh, that you can download uh, onto your machine for play. That'll be $14.99 a month. The top tier is PlayStation Plus Premium. God, this is just nauseating. Um, in addition to all of that, you'll also get 340 more games, including PS3 titles you can stream via the cloud. It will also have classic games available in both streaming and download options, including original PlayStation, PlayStation 2, and PSP games. Um, that will cost you $17.99 a month. It's complicated. Unnecessarily. <clears throat> yeah. I don't even know if I have a PlayStation Plus subscription right now. It's hard to say. Do you get notifications on your PlayStation that you need to check out the month's free games? I think I do. I think you do then. Darn. <laughs> they got me. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, do you guys... I don't play video games. I'm not a particular... Uh, video game player, but uh, you guys have uh, video game electronics. Do you play older games? Like, having the option to play a PlayStation or PlayStation 2 game or anything like that, would that appeal to you? I don't, because I can't. Because I don't have those things anymore. <clears throat> I, You know, so... Is there a, a game that I can think of off the top of my head that I would want to replay? No, especially given that I have so little time to play games now. Then again, I'm playing a 20-year-old Super Smash Bros. game every week. So True. I am interested in older games, clearly. Yeah. Okay. I You know, I think... Uh... It's just one of those things. What I don't, I get them having a separate tier for games and no games. Like I yeah. get that. That's fine. I don't get why you have the extra and the premium. Just charge seventeen ninety nine a month and just give them all the games. Because I think you're right, Dan. I yeah. think there are a lot. Uh, uh, how ahead. much is Game Pass? Oh boy, that's a really good question. I do know that Game Pass only has one price, one tier, but it comes with a bunch of games. Yeah, let me see. But also, I'm... there's the PC Game Pass and then the other. Yeah, so there's technically, according to their website, three options. Right. The PC is nine ninety nine a month, and the console is nine ninety nine a month. On on each platform, you get over one hundred high quality games, new games added all the time, member discount and details for fourteen ninety nine a month, an extra five bucks. You not only get that, uh, but you can also play games in the cloud. 
um, as well as uh, Xbox Gold and EA Play Access. Yeah. So, a little bit similar. That seems like a better deal, right? Well, yes, I would agree. I mean, I think playing games in the cloud is obviously a big one that PlayStation... It's not that you can play Xbox games in their cloud. It's that you can play Xbox games on any platform. Um, As well as um, EA Play being included is also a really really great perk. So um, I guess it's, again, it's that platform thing of who has the games you want to play. You know, if you were a big PS2 guy and they have all the PS2 games that you used to love and you want to play them, then it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A problem I don't have is not having enough games to play. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's fair. And that's why I think Xbox's strategy of focusing on, we're not going to give you hundreds of games, but we are going to let you play the games you have on any device, I think makes more sense. Whereas PlayStation's is like, no, this is for your PlayStation, but we'll give you every game we've ever made. Which is kind of wild. <laughs> Certainly wild. I don't know, man. All right, what's next? What is next? Let's see. That one was you, Dan, so I think it's Colby's turn to pick. Uh, To you. Chuck him under the bus there. (laughs) Uber taxis. Uber taxis? Uber taxis, it sounds like an oxymoron, but not anymore. Uh, Uber customers in San Francisco uh, may be able to order an actual taxi through the Uber app. Uh, Uber has just inked a deal with the Yellow Cab uh, company and Flywheel. Uh, It gives uh, 1,075 taxi drivers in the area access to Uber customers in the coming months. Uber has also recently struck a similar deal in New York City, allowing people in the city to hail any of its 14,000 taxi drivers through the app. Customers can expect to pay Uber X rates, which are calculated based on trip time and distance on top of a base fare. Uh, It's a year long pilot uh, that will begin August 5th. They're also working on deals in the UK that uh, could include uh, train tickets purchased through the Uber app, um, as well as bus passes. Huh. Weird. It. I'm surprised they didn't do this, like, sooner. <clears throat> yeah, so is Uber's strategy to become more like Stripe for transportation, where they're not they're not necessarily the provider of any transportation? They're just, like, you open the Uber app if you want to go anywhere, however you want to go there. Are they going to offer plane tickets next? They have. The, they used to have the helicopters. I don't know if they still do. <laughs> Good. To, I think they're still invested in drones. Uh, no, Dan. The answer is yes to to all of the above. And that's basically what Uber has said: is Hey, we want to be the the transportation one stop shop. You know, the article mentions that Uber fares are about eighty to eighty five percent of traditional metered rates uh, compared in uh, San Francisco specifically for this article. Uh, so drivers theoretically could earn less. I mean, I, I think Dan, you, you Uber waits to be of a certain size and a monopoly more or less. Then they force the taxi drivers to have no choice but to work with them. I think that's why now's the time where they've completely dominated the space. Now they can start forcing other big guys to start working with them. Mm-hmm. Crazy. I used to take regular cabs in San Francisco sometimes. Oh, for me. Really? It was all like airport, especially leaving the airport. Because when I was there, there was like a oh, like yeah. a full ban on Uber in the airport. So that's why. That's totally why. It was fine. Yeah, I, to me, I think the taxi thing actually makes less sense in a city. I think it makes more sense in rural areas where there are less mm. Uber drivers. So you need to uh, supplement the service with other transportation options. Whereas in San Francisco or New York City, I, I'm i assuming there isn't a shortage of Uber drivers. No, but there's also not a shortage of regular cabs. That's true. Right. That's true. I At mean, it's not in. Well, I guess in certain parts of the city there are. 
But it's an interesting yeah, a problem in the before times in New York was that uh, drivers would pick you up from places where people were and bring people to where they people were not, you know, sort of the outskirts of New York. But if you were in the outskirts of New York, it was very difficult to get from there uh, to where people were. Yep. Because they weren't going to cruise around there and look for fares because that's just not a good use of time. Right. Wasn't wasn't there a thing with the different colored taxis or something that, that had to do with that? Yes. Yes. The green taxis can't pick up in the populated areas. Right. Weird. Uh, my question for you guys is you are a, shall we say, uh, urbanites, uh, and, and, uh, more likely to use these services than I will with my new car. Uh, if given the option in the Uber app for a traditional Uber car or a taxi cab, which one would you be more likely to choose? Assuming the price and, and speed is the same. Colby, I don't know. <laughs> like, I, I guess I would have to assume it would be different in some way, but like, I really don't. Uh, I don't know. I feel like there's a. I don't know. Like they both fail, and you know the the worst cases in both cases are about the same. Like, really, what's the difference between a cab and an Uber? Nothing. Well, that, that's that's I guess the the central point of the question, right? Is is this if you're a taxi driver and you look at this and you say, well, my fares might be a little less, but I'll get more business. Is there a concern that people would be more likely to choose a traditional Uber car over your taxi? You know, do, do you feel that people are going to be biased either through experience or through habit or through whatever to not choose you? Yeah, maybe. I've never taken a regular taxi in Seattle. I've, I think I've only seen one. So I, I wouldn't do it because I have taken ride shares and it has been okay so far. Mm -hmm. In New York, in New York, the, the cabs were, they felt, just inside, very different from a normal car. Mm -hmm. I think their floor was higher, but their ceiling was a lot lower. So, like, sometimes you get into an UberX and you're like, oh, boy. Like, <laughs> where did this 1998 uh, Honda Civic come from? Uh, but sometimes you get into them and it's like, oh, this is a pretty nice car. But a cab is always going to be the same. It's going to be some, like, weird stripped-out interior. There's, like nothing to hang on to the seat is super uncomfortable and more like a bench than a seat and you got that fucking tv blaring in your face the whole time um but that's better than the 1998 to toyota corolla but way worse than the average rideshare thing <clears throat> the last uber i took smelled like throw up and also had a tv strapped to the back of this. Oh, I've seen those now to like the face. back of the headrest. Yeah. yeah. I gotta see if we can advertise this show on those screens. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be the audience. Well, that's the, that's the difference with the taxi driver though, right? Is they're certified of whatever they certify them in. Uh, and they're, I would assume theoretically more experienced in driving like a maniac around cities and getting to places versus some guy in a car. That's 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 a good point. There is a like I feel like the other dice roll with an Uber is like whether or not this is the person's first time driving where, where you live. Um and that usually becomes clear pretty quickly. It's usually not the case, but some amount like maybe one in ten times. At least for me, in my experience. Oh yeah, that hasn't really happened to me in New York. 
but I think I've lived in more populated areas. Well, I, you know, I'll just say on this, I think there is a great opportunity for a single app to hold all transportation options. I mean, they like they own it, but you know what I mean? They they easily explain all of the, you know, if you want to take a bus or a train or a plane or a boat or a car or there really isn't a a good uh, there's there are some sites that do it. Rome to Rio is is one that I've checked out before that will compare all of your different ferries and every option you have. Uh, and I think it would be convenient to have something like that. Yeah. Because yeah. damn it, Google... I want to take more trains. Yeah. <laughs> Another thing I've noticed that Google Maps doesn't really do is... Uh, so here, there aren't that many trains, which is sad, but there are tons of buses. But often the most... The fastest path to get to where you're going is to go downtown and then transfer to a bus and then go somewhere else. But downtown is super sketchy right now, sadly. So I wish I could say, I don't, I, I don't show me alternate transit routes. Like it'll do this for walking and for uh, other kinds of routes or even just being able to say, uh, like, I'm fine taking multiple modes of transit. I'll walk 20 minutes to a bus stop. That means I don't have to go downtown. That's fine. It like right. doesn't let you express that. It'll say, like, here's a bunch of transit options, all of which involve, like, no walking. It's like, what if I want to do a little bit of walking? Sounds like you need some sliders. You want a little bit of walking? You want a lot of walking? Yeah. I You know... There aren't that many sliders in modern modern apps. You need more sliders. No, it's all black and white with these guys. Yeah, I agree with that. There's a lot of, like, when you're looking up transit directions here, there is a lot of, like, you take a bus, like, way past the thing, the place you're going, and then get on another bus to go, like, back but slightly over. It's like... <laughs> it takes the same it would take the same amount of time for me to get off like the first bus and just walk like walk to the place i i i want to i like i want a switch that lets me uh choose that choose that option mm -hmm. well, did i ever talk on the show about touringplans.com let's see if that jogs any memories no. touringplans.com it's a cool website just talking about sliders where uh, it's for Walt Disney World and Universal Studios, and it's a company based in Florida, and they literally send people out to the parks every day, and in the real world, compute wait times and lines and all these sorts of things, and they have years and years of data, and basically, you go to their site and you say, I'm going on April 23rd, so they know historically how busy that day is and how busy each ride should be. Then you go wow. in and you check, I want to do these six rides... I'm going to get there at this time in the morning and I want to leave by this time. I want to go here to eat and I want a 30 minute break. And then they have sliders and you can say, I want more walking or less walking. I want, I'm willing to wait longer in lines. I want shorter waits. And they've got all these sliders and you hit compute and it does it magic. And it gives you an itinerary. That's hyper accurate. Cause they know exactly how long you're going to wait at nine 30 AM on April 23rd. And, it, and then they include the breaks, they include your meals, and you have a whole itinerary, and it's accurate to, like, within a minute. It's crazy. But that's the kind of stuff where I'm like, I get a theme park is a very controlled environment in the way the real world is not. But that is cool that we have all this data that can be computed to create something hyper-specific, but also flexible. It's a mini pick for you if you're going to Walt Disney World. That's cool. That's great. We actually might be going to Walt Disney World. I know Mr. Dan's got a big Florida trip coming up. Yeah, very. Yeah, it's very exciting. Um, going to visit my dad. Sadly, on the east side of Florida. Ah, uh, yeah. You can see the whole Atlantic. Yeah, we could. We could. <laughs> Sean has uh, very graciously offered to help us out in a place on the west side of Florida. Yeah, well, that's uh, yeah. It looks cool. I, I I just saw it from like, I just put the address into Google Maps, 
It's like, oh, okay, it's over here. But then I looked at it more closely the other day, and it's like on some crazy island like thing. Yeah, it's on it's on a uh, sort of a little island in uh, Sarasota. Yeah, that's all the resorts are kind of right along those islands, Siesta Key and all those areas out there. I did not know that there were... I thought the Key West was the only island. Nope. Nope. I mean, they're so uh, close to shore that, you know, that's... I think an island's a bit of a stretch. You just walk I'm there. sure there's some hyper-specific word for what that is, but... Uh, yeah, not, not quite an island. Uh... Any other stories in here you guys would like to discuss? Uh, let's talk about uh, Twitter. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, a bunch of Twitter news this week. Two big stories that I included in the rundown here. The first is that Twitter says they're adding an edit button. Gasp. Uh, they're working to allow users to edit their tweets after posting them. We don't know much more beyond that. Uh, other than the fact that they're planning to test the feature with Twitter Blue subscribers in the coming months. We don't know which tweets you can edit, how often you can edit them, whether they'll say they're edited, et cetera, et cetera, other than the fact that Twitter has said that things like time limits, controls, transparency um, will be taken into account when they roll it out. Yeah, I mean, it's not a hard thing. It's just it makes using the service super complicated. Well, I feel that's been Twitter's motto for the last couple of years. Let's make the service more complicated. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's kind of the inevitable, like, I don't know. What is a service that ex has existed and been successful that hasn't gotten more complicated? Not Instagram. Oh, oh, you, oh you, mean like a you mean like a tech company? Okay, <laughs> service, sorry, sorry, John. sorry, 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 sorry. Uh, and Coca-Cola has gotten more complicated. There's all these different flavors. There's the diet and the zero. They got those freestyle machines. Yeah. That's very fair. Life is complicated. Mm -hmm. um, what is Twitter blue? <laughs> you and millions of Americans <laughs> ask the same question. Twitter Blue is a monthly subscription service from our friends at Twitter. Um, it basically, you get premium features. Now, what does that mean? Um, uh, uh, undo Tweet is one that's exclusive right now to um, Twitter Blue subscribers. Um, that's really the... I'm trying to find a list here. Uh, Ad-free articles, bookmark folders, custom app icons and themes, um, navigation adjustments, things but like don't that. You, you don't get any ads, right? At, uh, well, it says ad-free articles. I don't know what that means. Yeah, I don't know what that means either. Yeah, I don't understand that. But anyway, there, there's rumors going around TweetDeck may get folded into Twitter Blue, so that'll be exclusive to Blue subscribers for whatever couple bucks a month um, they hit you up for that. So weird. Cool. Who knew? What's the other, what's the other article? Uh, you know that really dumb guy who's really rich? Well, <laughs> he spent some of his ungodly wealth on Twitter. Elon Musk bought 9.2% of Twitter, um, according to a filing. Uh, his, those stocks were worth about $2.89 billion. Um, it's classified as a passive stake, uh, which means that theoretically he won't be involved in the day-to-day -day operation of the company, though he has been awarded a seat on the board though Twitter has said that uh, while he will participate in the blue sky and future of the company, uh, he will not be involved in issues such as moderation, of which he's been very vocal, uh, that um, Twitter does not adhere to uh, free speech, according to him and his past tweets. Yeah, it's like a side effect of having that much money. Well, there is there is a belief that he could just, like, buy to it like just this is the first step of him having a buyout and just buying the rest of it he could but no one has to sell it to him right yes well yes uh no no he can acquire so much stock 
that they kind of don't have a choice, but they technically like a hostile takeover more or less. Um, but he can't just outright. I mean, he can offer money, but they can theoretically say no. It's just a matter of can he collect enough stock to have that leverage. Nine point two percent is a lot, uh, but it's not. Actually, I think that makes him the single largest shareholder of Twitter mm-hmm. um, at that nine point two percent. Did you see that they? What was it? Didn't they include a provision that was like you can't? This is as much stock as you can obtain. Yes, to, for like him that. to get the board seat for two years, he's not allowed to acquire any more than the nine point two percent he already owns. Yeah. Again, how legitimate that? I, I don't. I don't. All it takes is a holding company, and I guess he owns more, right? <laughs> or he partners with somebody else, and he owns it. So, right. who knows? Very weird. Uh, did you? Did someone tweeted something. And I didn't understand this joke, actually. So they tweeted something like, hey, if if Elon Musk took all the money that he used to buy 20% of Twitter and distributed it to all, you know, the families in the United States, that would be like $1,000 per family. And then Twitter's new feature that was like the uh, fact-checking, like context-adding feature stepped in and was like, actually, this is a joke, and it's not true. If you actually do the math, it's $25 per household. <laughs> uh, and I was like, and people were like, oh, my God, look, see, like, this company is, like, you know, adding context to the criticisms of the company. I was like, I didn't realize that was a joke. I did not know that. I saw that, and I was like, that's pretty fucked up. Uh, and I didn't think twice about it. So uh, that was just an interesting moment for me where I was like, oh, I think I'm like a super savvy media consumer and I know when things are true on Twitter. And I was I was taken for a ride. That has happened. uh, I, you know, when you first start following someone on like Twitter or something, you don't quite know their voice or the things they retweet. And there are people where it took me a while to realize, oh, when they retweet something, they're doing it sarcastically or as a joke. Um, Yeah, I have absolutely fallen in the same trap. I feel for you. Nice. All right. That sounds like the end of news uh, and moving on to picks, which is a part of the show where each of us brings something we want to share with the world and encourage them to go check out. And we're going to start from the bottom and work our way up. Uh, Not that he's the bottom. He's our first choice. Colby, what do you have this week? Well, speaking of games, I finally, I got the new Horizon game. It's pretty fun. Mm. It still works on my PS4, so no... No need to go buying a PS5 yet. It gets really loud. The fan in my PlayStation gets so loud nowadays. That might be because it's filled with dust. Oh, that's probably yeah. true. You can you, you can uh, clean it out. Maybe you I'll run that, that air purifier. Yeah, I'll I'll just put it next to the air purifier, and then I'll uh, clean it out. Right. Um. But yeah, it's fun. It's the same as the other Horizon game, which is great for me. Yeah, yeah, but a bit more forbidden in the West. Exactly. Okay. Very cool. Do you guys? You know, I'm scrolling through the website here, the uh, the PlayStation website for the game, and they're like, you can get the du- digital deluxe edition, which not only comes with the game, but it comes with a an, an a, a specific outfit or several specific outfits for use in the game. Like, do people care about that? I... Some people definitely do. Um, I've been, you know, I I rarely will pre-order a game. I haven't done it in a long time. But when I have, it's like sometimes they'll give you some of that in-game stuff. And when it actually, for single-player games, I think, oh, if you pre-order the game, you get this, like, badass weapon. I think that's cool. But for uh, other games where it's, like, multiplayer or something and they want to give people advantages it's just like, oh it's a new costume it's like i don't really care about that but i certainly would spend more money on a game just to get a new costume no but i think some people are completionists uh friend of the show steven sasso bought the entire like i don't know what you would call it the collector's edition with the the uh dinosaur statue and the uh making of book and and i'm sure it included all of that stuff well this is i'm looking at here for horizon forbidden west but you can get the regalia edition 
for two hundred and sixty dollars. That includes um, a steelbook display case, a mini art book, statues of like the creature from the game, um, plus digital and in-game content. And it sold out. So wow, man! I didn't know I could get a statue. I kind of want it's a statue. Now. I want it. Ah, uh, that's great. Horizon Forbidden West now available for PlayStation's four and five. Excellent pick, Colby. More games to play there. Dan, you've got something for us to watch here on the YouTube. Yes, uh, I discovered this a while ago. I can't believe I didn't pick it. It's a British TV show that is entirely available in its entirety on YouTube called Taskmaster. It's a game show. Uh, And the premise is two comedians are the hosts, and there are five contestant comedians in eight episodes. And throughout the eight episodes, the contestant comedians compete in tasks, like such as uh, paint a a self-portrait, but you can't step beyond this line and so like the the canvas is like five feet away you can't step beyond the line you have to rig up some way to like actually paint on the canvas or uh (laughs) spread your clothes as far apart as possible you have 10 minutes uh (laughs) um and it's there's oftentimes loopholes left in the rules intentionally or unintentionally it's very 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 funny it's kind of great British Bake Off ask where like throughout the course of the season you get to know the comedians and get introduced to to new people that way and stuff. Uh and it's all free on YouTube. This looks super fun. It's a blast, Sean. You're going to love it. This this le- very legitimately seems up my alley, so uh I'm definitely gonna check this out. Uh, it's right up my alley I... of like short YouTube stuff I don't have to like fully invest my time in. Each each episode is like it's like a full forty five minute episode, but you could just you know watch it one little segment at a time if you wanted to. That's awesome! Look at that. Got so many videos. This is great. Good pick, Dan. I'm definitely gonna check this out. They have playlists of all the seasons. If you scroll down to like the playlist section, you can just watch through the whole season. Series, as they call them over there. Series, yeah. Love it. Cool. Taskmaster on YouTube. Check that out. Very cool. Uh, my pick is also something to watch. Uh, we have talked about our good friend, our good personal friend, Elizabeth Holmes on the show, um, and the fine folks over at the Theranos Corporation. All it takes is one drop of blood, guys, or several drops of blood, or just a whole vial. Uh, and, uh, we've read the book. We talked about the documentary. Uh, uh, Matt and I talked about it over on Up for Debate. And finally... Uh, it's reaching the end of its cultural life cycle with The Dropout on Hulu, which is the fictional story of Theranos and Elizabeth Holmes, as played by Amanda Siegfried. Uh, and I don't know if you guys... Have you guys been watching this? No. Listen, I, even if you're, like, kind of over that story, it's really spectacularly well made. Like, for any topic of anything. The acting is awesome. The series is really great. It's eight episodes. The final episode drops this week. Um, I highly, highly recommend uh, giving it a watch if you have a Hulu subscription. It's just really well, well made and well crafted, and does even if you've read every book and watched every documentary, it adds more to the story. So um, I and and it's got a great cast. So um, I'll I'll give a shout out for the dropout on Hulu. Nice. And that is that. Was it Mitt Siegfried and? Mean Girls. Yes. Cool. And she does the Elizabeth Holmes voice so good. <laughs> she does it, so, and she does it like because it starts with her like in college and like that far back. So before she like really, and you can hear the voice like when it finally gets going. It, it's really good. <laughs> She's shockingly good in it. Um, nice. It's a great, uh, great series. <clears throat> uh, guys, anything else uh, you'd like to share or discuss this evening? I'm good. It was good to hang out. Good to be back. It was. It's been too long. Uh, We appreciate everyone out there who joined us this evening. I will very quickly mention over at Up for Debate, it is March Madness is wrapping up uh, because of my uh, illness and being out of town. Matt gets a bonus week into April, so we'll be doing another one. 
it's been all text-based adventure games this month. Again, like March Madness last year. So uh, this week, are you guys fans of A Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy? Yeah, totally. Well, we're playing the text adventure game last week and this week. So, uh, and spoiler alert, I know nothing about it, and I'm not very good at it. So uh, you're definitely going to want to check that out, um, as well as a future episode on forgettable songs from the 2010s uh <laughs> over at up for debate tv wherever you get podcasts this show is don't panic at don't panic.io make sure you go over and subscribe wherever you get your podcast check us out there with a the video version on youtube see us in high definition and of course uh on the website don't panic.io we've got all the episodes as well as the picks the links to the picks we talked about are all going to be there so you don't have to remember you just go to the website and check them out but that's going to do it here we're going to be back next time with more tech news more discussion tons of excitement you're going to want to come back and check it out but until then on behalf of colby and dan i'm sean we appreciate being here and we'll see you next time for another great episode of don't panic <laughs>